Hello, everybody, and welcome to this really sh I'm not allowed to say bad words yet, and welcome to this badly lit video. Actually, let me see, can I do this? That's kind of brighter, right? Okay, hopefully I don't look like I've been crying or nothing. I'm coming to you tonight, very late, much <laughs> Let's just see something real quick. Let's just see something real quick. Mm-hmm. Boom, dude. It's there. <laughs> oh, fuck. Because it's after midnight, so you get so alone at times, it just makes sense. The audiobook is now out. It is November 19th now. I wanted to have one of these with you and just have a talk. Because I got two things kind of happen, and I think they're kind of entwined. Um, but I want to thank Bunny for the question, because it's a pretty good question. Yeah. So cheers. So this is going to be kind of just like a free-flowing thing. So I was asked if I think I've changed my mind about anything really in the scope of Poetic Anarchy. Whether it be Poetic Anarchy Press, um, the Poetic Anarchy course, how I write poetry, the whole thing. And I don't know if this came up because I was talking about this. I don't think so. I think this came up separately, but it came up with me talking to Bunny, which is basically as I'm studying a lot about like art and stuff like that right now, I stumbled upon postmodernism. Okay. Now, as far as like my painting goes, I feel like my paintings are like where abstract expressionism meets like neo-expressionism. Like I feel like that's like my sweet spot if you had to put labels on shit. You know what I'm saying? Like if you have to do that, that's what I feel like I'm doing. Because some of my shit doesn't really fucking look like anything even though I try to say what I think it is. And then there's other things I try to make forms out of that, like, are really primitive looking. So, whatever. Anyway, so as I was, like, reading about all this stuff and watching videos and all this stuff and doing all this shit, um, I came across postmodernism. And I always thought, and this might sound really stupid, but... I always thought postmodernism is what people said when they didn't know how to differentiate themselves from modern art, whether it's like music or like whatever, like, like post hardcore and all that other fucking shit. It's just like, come on guys. So I didn't really think much of it when I like heard the term. But in reading, like, about, like, what it is, I'm like, holy shit, like, a lot of, like, the poetic anarchy ethos or mission statement or whatever the fuck you want to call it seems very postmodern, which is weird because I still, I, again, I didn't know it was a fucking thing. So let's look at it. Mergler says, postmodernism denies logical thinking. This is the one thing that I think someone might say, like, like modernism is logical, but postmodernism, like, is not logical. But modernism also, like, is objective, whereas postmodernism is subjective. But I think being subjective is the only logical thing that you could do. And that objective art is actually very illogical. You know what I'm saying? There is no universal truth. Postmodernism ignores the past. 
It's fast, it's irrational, it's chaotic, it's spontaneous. It doesn't have any like structure, okay? So with everything else there, yeah, like the whole poetic anarchy thing is very postmodern as far as poetry goes, for real. But knowing now that there is some sort of like not necessarily a blueprint but like these are things um i guess it it kind of makes it easier to talk about i guess because like i've heard i think buck said it to me a couple times <laughs> he's he said like that i've had a postmodern view on poetry before but he's also said i i have a very um socialistic view on poetry but the question okay like do i think anything has changed well as far as the press goes a lot of things changed i felt i don't know i just like i'm only one man you know and a lot of people have offered to help do stuff but the stuff i need help with like i don't think a lot of people would be able to do you know but, like, just dealing with people's shit, like, no offense, but, like, we all know, like, poets and writers and artists, we're, we're all fucking bitchy little creatures that, like, complain and have fucking, like, I don't know, like, sure, we have egos, but we also wear our heart on our sleeve, so we get hurt easy, you know? I'm not in the business of hurting poets. Like, that's not what I want to fucking do. Um, when I started the press, I was hoping to find poets that I really liked. And I did. And then I found some poets I didn't like so much. Okay? And then the poets that I didn't like so much kind of felt like they could, like, buy me to, like, do things for them. Like that I would, like, talk good about their books or publish their stuff or anything. And they were, like, mortified when I wouldn't do that. And so as soon as that shit started happening, I'm like, okay, like, yeah, it, it only takes, like, I don't know, one hole to sink a ship. But, like, like I just don't have time for that shit. I want to fucking create good art. I want to fucking do shit. I don't want to fucking babysit you and have to coddle you and tell you that I don't like your shit. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I'm sure there's tons of people that do like your shit. So find those people. Like, I'm not the one for you. And, like, another thing, too. Like, you can read my shit, like, in a lot of places. You could even read the blood rag for free on my website. Okay, so you can see the kind of stuff I'm putting out. If your stuff does not sound like anywhere in the same fucking ballpark as that, like, don't send it to me, you know? And it's like, I know a lot of it's different because, like, I do the YouTube channel and I do these videos where I'm, like, talking to you, and a lot of you probably feel like when I'm doing stuff like this, like I'm talking to you, you know, that like the, the writing tips I'm giving you, I'm, I'm giving them to you personally, you know, and I kind of am, but unless like you have a conversation with me, like in the comments down below or send me an email at I hate Matt Wall at gmail.com. Like it's, we don't have a conversation and we don't have a relationship. I don't know anything about you. Okay. But I feel like a lot of you, like you've been watching me for a long time. So you feel like we're a lot closer than we are. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, I don't know who the fuck you are because you've never reached out to me before. Okay. So what I'm getting at is, like, if you want to talk to me, you want some advice, you want me to just, like, tell you that it's going to be okay, I can't do that if you don't reach out to me, okay? But with that said, just because you reach out to me doesn't mean I'm going to like your shit. And that's okay. That doesn't mean I don't like you. 
It just means I might not like your work. Okay? And that's okay. There's tons of people out there who, like, I don't love their work at all. But, like, they're great people and I love them as people. Tons of people. Like, you have no idea how many people. Like, the people who are probably some of the closest people to me, like, their art, it's not even like I hate it. It just is, like, indifference. And that's awful. Like, you never want anyone to be indifferent about your art. That's, like, the worst thing in the world. Um, but, like, but I, they're my closest fucking friends. I love them, you know? So, and just so you know, they don't watch my YouTube channel. So if you thought I was talking about you, which I wasn't, like, there we go. Um, but so back to this whole thing, like, it was really hard and it was kind of heartbreaking because I had big plans for the press. And when I realized... Like, I don't have the bandwidth to, like, do all that shit and still create my own shit. Like, one of those things had to go. And, like, of course, the press not being a focus was going to be that. Because, like, my art, like, means more to me than putting out other people's art. Because here's the thing, putting out one's art is easy as shit. And I thought, too, by putting out, like, other people's art, that a community would be built, okay? And I'm not talking about just an online community. I'm talking about, like, a real community and, like, feet-on-the-ground type of community. And that didn't happen. And, like, no matter how I, how hard I tried to do that in different places, it didn't happen. And I can't force people to do things. I can't force people to like put on events in other cities. I can't force people to do anything like that. So like, it's just, it's not ready. I was trying to force something that's probably about 10 years out. Like, God willing. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully less. But, like, I feel like I have a lot of big dreams. I, I've i always been a big, a dream big motherfucker. And if you've been around, like, me or this channel long enough, you will realize, like, oh, he's tried a lot of things and they didn't work out. Okay? That is true. But the, the difference between me and, like, everybody else you know is shit doesn't work out and then I try something else. And I keep trying things. And that's why I have more things out than anyone you know. That's why I've accomplished more than anyone you know. Okay? So... Like, you have to fail in order to succeed. Or at least you have to give yourself the opportunity to fail if you're ever going to succeed at anything. You know what I'm saying? So, like, my original main idea for the press not working out, um, to me that's not like a, a huge like failure because it could happen again tomorrow. Like, you know, like it's not that the press is dead by any means at all. It just means what my original plan for it was, isn't going to work. So I need to come up with another plan. Um, and that's fine. So as far as the writing stuff and like the lessons go, um, I'm trying to think through, any of the stuff, and I don't think so. I think almost every single thing we talked about in the Poetic Anarchy course, which again, if you want to take that course, it's for members in the playlist called Poetic Anarchy. Um, but And there's like almost like 200 videos in there. So knock yourself out. That's a lot of stuff to do. I think 
if I were to do anything again in the course, I think I would streamline it more, make it simpler, because like I'm really hoping to get the book done soon. Maybe I could fix that this week. I don't know. But I really want to get that book done. I think being a little more, not whimsical about it, understanding the spiritual nature and the metaphysical nature of creating art. I think that's really big. And just trying to make the original Poetic Anarchy course as approachable by everybody, I tried to downplay the woo stuff a little bit. Or at least the spiritual stuff of writing or art in general. Because, like, I just think people get freaked out. And especially, like, if you are a religious person of any kind and then someone starts talking religion but they're not talking about whatever the fuck your religion is. It's like, oh shit, like, what the fuck? Like, And it's like, I don't have fucking time for that shit. It's really an important part of creating Like, being in tune with your spirit, being in tune with your soul. And um, I, I try, I seriously just try not to talk about that stuff too much. And I know I slip into it every once in a while, like when I talk about like antennas and the ether and like where ideas come from and harnessing and all that other shit. Like I know like I slip into it and talk certain words, but, um, and just like, energy transference you know this is huge real shit i think there is a way that when you write something the love the eroticism the grief the anger the hate the fear the horror the terror whatever it is you're feeling if you really are feeling that when you are creating that thing, when you are writing those words, I really feel like there is a way for someone to transfer that emotion into that word on the, on the words on the page. So they, they sit there, they hold that vibration. So when someone who is susceptible or vibrates on that same level, like walks by that piece, or like their eyes go over those lines, it like jumps out at them and grabs them. And it's like magnets. It's like moth to flames. You know what I'm saying? And that is how you find your tribe. That is how you find your audience. You know what I mean? But again... Like, a lot of people don't want to hear that. A lot of people don't want to hear that you don't fucking need talent and you just need marketing. A lot of people don't want to know any of this shit. And again, I I, I don't want to tell you that your art, like, oh, this, this part isn't good. You should really try to rework this. That's not my place. And some of you are like, but we're trying to learn. If you learn by doing that, you are learning how to do things like the person who you took your work to. What you should be trying to figure out is how to create the way you want to create. How to get your energy, your vibration out and into something. Like, don't worry about what other people are doing. That's one of the things that drives me fucking crazy. Everybody is constantly, like, comparing shit to other people. Like, oh, well, like, I thought I was doing really good, but then I read so-and-so, and and like, oh, God. Or, like, if you, like, I'm, I'm barely even going on fucking social media at all anymore. But, like, a lot of you will go on Instagram and follow a bunch of poets, okay? And you go to read their work just to see if your stuff you think is better than theirs. Like, you're not going because you're like, oh, I really resonate with this poet. Like, oh man, that that poem they wrote was so good. It like totally spoke to me and like I can't get that line out of my head. Like, a lot of you just go 
so you can see, like, uh, I'm better than that guy, but he's got, like, 47 likes, and I only have 10. <sighs> what the fuck am I doing wrong? Like, what, what? Dude, oh, that is not what creation is about, and that's definitely not what marketing is about, okay? Like, none of this is that hard. Okay, I'm getting kind of... I'm, I'm getting a little on the whimsy because I'm on the the juice. In that gin and juice. Like, I wish I would have done more of that. But I also don't know how you guys like that shit. Like, a lot of times I've dropped little bits of that shit into stuff just to see what you guys think. And there's not really a whole lot of response to it. But I also don't know what you guys want to hear. Because, like, a lot of you out there who watch this channel fucking religiously, okay, you watch it, and then you'll, if you write me at all, you write me to tell me that you don't think I'm right about something, and that you think something completely different. Okay. Solid. Now what? Like, what do you want me to do with that information? Like, and maybe this goes back to that guy who's like, what, you can't take criticism? I could take all sorts of criticism. I'm just not asking for it. Like, that's a whole different thing. Like, I already know what I'm doing. Whether I'm doing it right or wrong, I don't give a shit. It's how I'm doing it. And it's how I've been doing it. And it's how I've been doing it successfully. So why the fuck am I going to take advice from somebody who hasn't fucking done a goddamn thing? Or somebody who hasn't really done anything, but because of their degree, fell into a good teaching gig? Like, I don't know. I'm sorry. Like, I'm sure there's other people who have, like, super low self-esteem that you could, like, mold into whatever automaton you need them to be like I just I just don't care like I don't know why there are so many huge pockets of different schools of art where like if you aren't doing exactly what everyone else has done you're an asshole but then at the same time, the only people that these people respect is when someone like, like steps out of the box and does something like, oh shit, let's talk about this person, blah, 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 blah. But then like, they go, but you know, you can only break the rules if you know the rules. That's the rule. And that's bullshit. That's, that's not even true. Like, again, I will use this fucking analogy. If you don't know the law, the rules, and you speed, but you didn't know what the speed limit was, if you get pulled over, you're still getting a ticket. You're not going to be able to go, oh, well, I'm technically not speeding since I didn't know what the speed limit was. The cop will go, huh. That makes sense. Can you step out of the vehicle, please? <laughs> it's just... Oh, my God. The things that fucking... Like, these... Fucking douchebags come up with to justify the fact that they spent a shit ton of money on a fucking degree that means fucking nothing. It's laughable. And what's that Stephen Fry? That motherfucker? Jesus Christ. He said that, too. You can't... You can't break the rules unless you, you, you've you learned the rule. Look, you should constantly be learning. And this is the thing I don't think people understand about me. Like, most of the day, I spend learning shit, studying shit. It's not like I'm like... Like, I already know everything. I never have to look up anything or study anything ever again. I'm constantly, constantly learning shit. Whether it's, like, 
about certain poets or writers or painters or whatever, or different like movements or music or language or whatever. The problem is, and I think this is where a lot of people get like butt hurt, is that I think most poetry out there is not good. And I think most of the poets out there are not good. And some of the things that piss me off is when I do find a good poet or a poet who's like a more contemporary poet, and I really like a poem or two of theirs, I listen to like them on an interview or in a podcast, and they say fucking stupid, ridiculous, goddamn awful shit. And it's like, what? Like, why do you got to be such a douchebag? Like, just... Just talk about writing. Or, or say, you know what? Writing's fucking boring. I write stuff. You could read that if you want to know about my writing. Let's talk about, I don't know, like your favorite cartoon. Did, did you have a favorite monster truck growing up? Let's talk about that. Let's talk about dating. Let's talk about what your first video game console was. Like, that's way better than talking about, like, your stupid fucking thoughts on writing. Like, especially if your takes are shit. Ugh. I don't know. Most people probably think my takes are shit anyway, so it doesn't matter. But, you know, we're, we're, we're still talking about me, I guess, and like what things I think I've learned and haven't learned. Um, I think I've learned more about marketing and sales over the last three years than I have about poetry because my poetry still changes. Like, um, well, Here's something like I thought I had kind of lost my like I was like, I don't know, like I, I, I'm writing OK stuff, but I haven't written anything fucking badass, like amazing in a long time. And um, fucking wrote a poem today. And I think it's like one of the best things I've ever written. I think it's one of those poems that is going to make people think is going to make people guess and um it's just a badass fucking poem and it's really dirty, but like also kind of beautiful, you know? Um, and it kind of takes stabs at some of the fucking literary bullshit, you know, actually very proud of it. The more I talk about it right now, <laughs> Oh, cheers. I will say this, not that we're talking about it, but it is getting harder and harder to not smoke all of a sudden. Which is really weird. Very, very strange. Because it's been, uh, let's see, July, August, September, October. It's been, it's almost been six months since I quit smoking. It's fucking wild. I thought I'd quit drinking before I quit smoking. Look how that turned out. Jesus. Anyway, so back to things that I've learned. Lens flare, J.J. Abrams, thank you so much. Um, with poetry, um, I've noticed that, with very few exceptions, I have noticed that most poets go through phases where they write a lot, and then they don't write so much, and then maybe they don't write at all. And then they write a lot again. And I think a lot of this has to do with the muse and how the muse enters your life. And what you do with the muse once the muse is there. But here's what I'm going to say to you folks. Okay? When the muse arrives, you have to, like, love and hold and cherish and just, like go down on foreplay till the cows come home the muse 
we're speaking figuratively, of course. Because if you, like, like you're so inspired by all this shit, and then you write a couple poems, then you're like, um, but I don't really have time to continue this right now. So, like, if you keep, like, going like this to the muse, the muse is going to leave. And if you have a good relationship with the muse, the muse will come back. But if you don't understand your relationship with the muse, it's going to be hard for you to get that back. Will you be able to write during that time? Of course. Will you love what you write during that time? Maybe. But you know, anyone who has had like really amazing experiences with their writing to where they feel like it's almost not even them writing. Like that they're just like the vessel and like words pour out of you like a fucking broken faucet and you just you're just like barely hanging on for the ride like you know what I'm talking about because sometimes it's like that and sometimes it's like pulling teeth just trying to get a line out you know what I'm saying and sometimes that sometimes is a long time you know what I mean so, I would strongly recommend that when the muse comes, you gotta fucking ride that shit. It's just with anything, like, when you start dating, you know, like, no one will fucking call you, no one will call you, no one will call you. You go out with one girl, you go out with two girls, next thing you know, you're going out with, like, six people at once, and your phone's ringing off the hook. And you're like, I, I can't. And then, like, you just, like, start breaking it off with motherfuckers. And then they all seem to go away. Like, how the fuck did that happen? You know? And it's, like, it's the it's the saying, when it rains, it pours. You know? Like, um, when you're hot at the track, you bet more and you go more often. When you're fucking doing shitty at the track, you bet less and you go less. Same fucking principle. You know what I mean? Um, so when the muse comes and offers herself to you, you just, you got to cherish the fuck out of that. And you just got to fucking go. Like, put as much stuff on hold as you can, because it's not going to last forever. Like, if you're lucky, it'll last a month. Okay, and this is just my experience. Um, sometimes it's lasted a lot longer than that, but like a month is usually pretty good. If you could somehow manage to just like fuck everything off for 30 days. Once, once you feel that happen, you'll know it because you'll be like, oh my God, I just wrote like 10 poems tonight. How did that happen? After never writing anything. Okay, that's when the muse is there and that's when you got to fucking go. Now, some of you who take a lot longer with your stuff and like revise a lot, it would obviously be, be, have, be a different feeling. So it might be something like where like you write like two stanzas or a sonnet. And not only is it just a sonnet, but it's like, like you're like, oh my God. That's profound as fuck, and that was easy. <sighs> the fuck? And then it's just like, that's when you know that you're not alone, okay? And I'm not trying to say it like that to be scary, you know? It's just, it is what it is. And um, we are all very talented people. A lot of our talent, even though you don't need any talent, a lot of our talent is just being able to understand when the muse is there. That's it. And what to do with the muse once the muse has arrived. And be fucking grateful. Guys, when you write a fucking great poem, when you write a short story that you think is great, like, just say thank you out loud. Like, think whatever... Not that, like, something else is writing through you or anything like that. I don't want to fucking get into any theological bullshit. 
But it's just like, you have to understand if you are one who has tried to do this a lot, there are times when it is easy to do it and times when it's hard. Times when things flow from you and times when like nothing comes up on the screen. There is a reason for this. So when you write that poem, when you write that story, when you write that first chapter of a novel, you know, just fucking say thank you. Being grateful is so huge and it goes a long way. It doesn't just end right there. Like just fucking being grateful and having gratitude, like transcends a lot of shit in your life. And I'm not like the best person in the world to talk to about this. Like I fail all the time, but you guys know I fail all the time because I fail on here all the time. I'm constantly talking about projects I'm starting that never end up happening. But I still have more books out than you. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm just saying, you know what you know what I mean? Like the only way you will have a huge catalog that with residual income and IPs like make you be able to be barely fucking ow barely fucking not homeless okay you have to be grateful and you have to fucking try a lot and fail a lot okay for fuck's sake so anytime any of you especially like anarchy crew peeps and when we do the writing zooms i'm gonna try to put this video up on tuesday on november 19th but we're, we're having a writing zoom on tuesday november 19th at six o'clock pacific that I hope all of you guys could come to. Like, the last few weeks, it's been, like, sketchy as fucking weird. So, I apologize. When you guys, like, show me that you guys just wrote something amazing, it's fucking awesome. I love sharing that celebration with you guys. That's really fucking cool. Because every time you write something and you're, like, happy with it, and you're like, fuck yeah, look what I fucking did. Just know that every time you do that, there's probably over a thousand other writers at that exact moment just frustrated as fuck that they can't get anything on paper. They're all over the place. And it's sad. I'm not saying like we should revel in the fact that they can't get anything done. But just realize that when you get that one thing done, that is a fucking accomplishment and that should be applauded. I have a really hard time celebrating my own accomplishments and I usually don't take time to celebrate anything. I'm usually like, what's the next project? What's the next poem? What's the next book? What's the next adventure? Okay. So that is something I am trying really, really hard to get better at, but I have noticed that it's easier for me to celebrate your victories than it is to celebrate mine. Okay. So I don't know if that's like the caregiving side of me, the pampering, like, um, provider kind of thing inside me. Um, but yeah, I'm also thinking about doing some kind of like artist retreat where I was thinking about it today. Like, if I could get, like, a space, if I could do something where, like, can I get everyone to come out? Like, even if it's one-on-one, -on -one, like, come out for a week, and I just, like, every day make art with you, and, like, take you around to see things that are, like, totally inspiring. And, like, we wake up and, like, do some yoga or something, write some poetry, go for a walk, come back, paint something, come back, do some, like, writing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Go get something to eat, go to the beach, go to a museum, write, talk about what we're writing, get drunk, that kind of shit. Um, if that sounds like something you would want to do, leave it in the comments down below. <laughs> the fucking most degenerate fucking writing retreat of all time. But I think that would be fun. 
I think that'd be good times. On a side note, I have learned that I need to try a lot harder on making good friends because I feel like the friends I have in my life aren't very good friends. Not that there's anything horribly wrong with them, just that they're not good for me. You know what I mean? Like, whether it's just like they're too negative or their ideals are weird or they're fucking on a shit ton of drugs or like every time I talk to them, like they like either like gaslight me or go all toxic weird or they're just like hear shit that isn't fucking happening like that kind of shit please don't think i'm talking about anyone who's watching this video for fuck's sake i'm talking about people in my life um but i do need to try harder to make friends so if you are someone who is been watching my videos for any length of time and you're in the southern california area or roundabout and you'd like to fucking hang out and do something, like, let me know. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. It's just, like, like get a cup of coffee or get a drink or, like, go to a museum or go to the beach or read a book or whatever. Like, let me know. That would be really cool. Because, um, like, most of my really good friends are people who I've met on here, but they, they're all over the place. And I don't have really much physical interaction with people i'll leave it at that like i could get into more detail but that's unnecessary so if you are someone who is in the area please let me know i would love to just fucking hang out and start making shit so bunny i don't know if this answers your question or not um I don't know. I don't know what to say. I feel like if you don't give somebody like a like a call to action at the end of like what have you learned or what would you do different or something like that, it's like pointless. So again, trust your instincts. Listen to the muse. Don't worry about what others think. Keep going try a million things because you will fail at 90% of them but the 10% that you don't fail at are going to be the things that are your legacy you know so anyhow um, I think I'm going to split now but if you liked what I was talking about here join the Anarchy Crew so you can come to the writing zoom tonight so you can go through the Poetic Anarchy course and just check all that shit out I only have a couple copies of these left. And I don't think this whole thing, like, just message me. I think, like, people are still too timid. Me telling you you need to email me to get something, that's, like, too, that's too personal. You know, like, you have to be able to just go on an anonymous thing and click a link. And then you can get something. So I guess we're going to have to go back. I guess I'm, I think I'm going to try to maybe just put a... Um, thing up on my website like a store on my website because I don't want to do Etsy anymore but like I just I, I can't believe that me asking you to email me if you want to buy something is like pulling teeth and like for so for those of you who said it would be easier if I just had a storefront again like I'm not trying to call you out by saying what I just said but it's just it's I, I find it humorous that me asking for you to send an email is so hard. So I'll just have to do the store, whatever. But again, in like about a week and a half maybe, on the beach, if these three copies aren't sold, it's going to be put in the vault. Anxious anxiety, if those eight copies aren't sold, it's going in the vault. Okay? Um, so yeah. Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all real quick. I do want to thank you for just joining me on this journey and um, contributing as much as you have, like watching these videos, joining my members, buying my books, um, liking my art, just being a part of it. I just appreciate you so much. Okay. So now, I will talk to you all later.